Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent in Canterbury and in this short video clip I want to discuss with you a very common question that students ask me and this is which statistical test should I use? So what I'm going to do is I will show you the three most common statistical tests and how you can do them in Excel or in other online programs uh, that you might encounter in a bioscience lab. Okay, so in uh, this first test we have uh, a little experiment. We have uh, we measure the efficiency of let's say an antibiotic and in order to do this experiment we uh, plate some bacterial colonies on different plates. Uh, we have four plates with antibiotic, we have four plates without antibiotic and we then after incubation we test how many colonies of our bacteria grow on the different plates. So here are the numbers 2, 4, 1 and 5 on the plate with antibiotic and here are the numbers on the plates without antibiotics. And now the question is, of course, is this antibiotic uh, doing anything? Or in other words, is there a statistically significant difference between uh, the plates with antibiotic and without antibiotic? So our null hypothesis here would be there is no difference in the means of the uh, colony counts and in order to um, look at that we will uh, use a t-test and uh, you can do that very easily in Excel. So we want to calculate the p-value uh, for this particular experiment and in order to do that we use Excel and it has built in t-test function so we invoke this function and uh, it starts with uh, equal sign equals t and uh, here comes up t-test and now the program asks you for some um, information and in order to show you this a little bit better uh, here is the help function. So the first argument uh, that you have to put in is the first test array. So this is this one here and I just simply drag it down separated by a comma from the second array. So here array 2. Again we do exactly the same thing. Drag it down and separate it from a, with a comma. Now the next thing that the program is asking us is what is called the tails. Now tails means um, do we make an, a decision whether one of the two test parameters is or whether one of the two uh, data sets is bigger than the other or whether we want to just simply say yes they are different. If we just simply say they are different from each other then we use a two-tailed test and we just simply enter two in this case. If we just if we if we want to be more specific and say uh, one is bigger than the other then we would use a, t uh, a one-tailed test. Usually I go only for a two-tailed test uh, which answers the question are they different. And the last thing that we need to do is we put in a type and this type, Excel has three predefined types. Um, if uh, you see this here, if you type in a one, then uh, a, a paired t-test is performed. Paired simply means that the data depend on each other and I will show you in a minute what, what this actually means. Uh, here our data don't depend on each other, they are completely independent, so with antibiotic and without antibiotic they are very much independent, uh, these numbers that we get from each other. So we want to do an independent or unpaired t-test and for this we have option 2 or 3. Now option 2 is uh, valid when we have 
equal variances. Now, very clearly, the variances here are pretty different. I don't even need to do the variance test. I can just see that by eye. So in this case, I would go for a type 3 test. So uh, because this means a t-test, a two-sample t-test with unequal variances. And we just simply perform the calculation and we get as a result we get 0 0.0088. Uh, that is our p-value and uh, in this case we can say that uh, this p-value is significantly smaller than our confidence level and uh, we usually set the confidence level as 0 0.0 Five, that would be our confidence interval, uh, confidence level. Now we see that the p-value here is significantly smaller than that. We remember if p is low, then the null hypothesis has to go. This means our null hypothesis was that there is no difference between the samples, so we can't justify this null hypothesis, and we have to say there is a significant difference between the sample means. So we would be justified in saying that here the antibiotic obviously has a significant effect. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. Now let's have a look at a paired test. And uh, here we are, for example, measuring the pulse of patients. So we take patient number one, measure the pulse before we administer a treatment. Then we administer the treatment and measure the pulse after the treatment and get 78. So what you see here is that we take the same patient and we do a before and after test. And that is characteristic for a paired test. Now let's see how we uh, do that. So we have here five patients where we measure the pulse before the treatment and then after the treatment. And we can again um, uh, formulate a null hypothesis. In this case, the null hypothesis would be that the treatment does not cause any difference between before and after. So that is our null hypothesis and we usually would go for, again, a confidence uh, level of 0 0.05. Now how do we do that? Well, again, we invoke a t-test in Excel, so t-test, and as before, it asks us for the first array. And I, hang on, I made a mistake here because the patient number is not our array. It is the data that is our array. So G6 to G G10. It asks us for the second array. This is the after test. And it asks us whether we want a one-tailed or two-tailed test. So one-tailed test would say the after treatment is bigger than the before treatment or the other way around. A two-tailed test would just simply say there is a difference between these two uh, treatments. So we go for a two-tailed test and now we have to decide what kind of test we want. And that is the last one, that's the type of test. And here we have a paired t-test because the data are paired. They come from the same patient. So the 60 and 78 belong to the same patient here. Likewise, the 110 and 100 belong to the same patient here. They don't belong to patient one, but they belong to patient three. So they are, in a way, they belong to each other. So we therefore go for a type one test and we get a p-value of 0 0.14 and our confidence level was 0 0.04. That's a very standard confidence level. And uh, since our p-value is much larger than the confidence level, we can say the p-value is high. So if p is high, 
the null hypothesis can stay. Sorry about the accent. So we do not, do not reject the null null hypothesis and we say actually there is no significant difference between the before and after treatment. The last test that I want to do with, uh, discuss with you is a chi-square test. And this test we usually use when we want to compare expectation, expected data and observed data. And a very good tool for that is this uh, online calculator, uh, GraphPad QuickCalcs. So here is the link graphpad.com quick calcs and I show you how you do a chi-square test in this online resource. It is a little bit more tricky in Excel so that's why I uh, prefer this online tool. So what we want to do is we want to go to categorical data and you see fishers and square test, chi-square test. So uh, click continue and now we want to do a chi-square comparison between observed and expected frequencies. So let's continue with this. And what you see uh, here is that you can enter different categories, for example, and you can uh, put in observed and expected numbers. So uh, let's get started and let's uh, look at an uh, sort of an experiment that uh, Gregor Mendel did. Um, I've got here, need to push that a little bit uh, uh, over to that side. Uh, he crossed peas and looked at the seeds. So he crossed uh, yellow and uh, wrinkled uh, seed bearing plants with uh, green and smooth and then looked at the offspring and uh, counted 120 wrinkled and yellow, 145 green and wrinkled, uh, 98 smooth and yellow and uh, 197 green and smooth. So I've set up a little contingency table, uh, this one here. And I also calculated the uh, total margins. And if you want to know how this is done, uh, please have a look at uh, one of the other videos. And I have also then said, OK, good, we have got four different categories. Yellow wrinkled, yellow smooth, green wrinkled, green smooth. And from that I can calculate the expected numbers. So my total number is 560. And if each uh, one of the categories uh, was chosen uh, randomly, we would expect for each category 140 seats of each one of them. So what we can do is we can put these numbers into uh, the uh, chi-square test. So for the first one, we have I don't write down the, well, we do category A, uh, B, it doesn't matter in this case, C and D. And we said all the obse or, or expected numbers are 140. So I just simply put that in. These are the numbers that we expect. And now I have to go back to my spreadsheet. Yes, here we are. Uh, for the first one, we have 120. For the second one, it was 98. Then we have 145. Oops, that was in the wrong one. 145. The last one was 197. 
So here we have our four different categories. That is what we observe. And that is actually here what we expect. And now we can do the calculation. And what we see here is the two-tailed p-value is less than 0 0.0001. So this means, and uh, QuickCalx gives us uh, immediately an interpretation. It says the difference between observed and expected values is considered to be extremely statistically significant. So what we can say is that our expectation of 140 for each category apparently is not correct because the difference between observed and what we expected is very, very different. Now, obviously, what we can do now is we can come up with an alternative hypothesis and say, OK, uh, if it is different, uh, what could be the reason? But obviously, we don't know what the reason is. And that would be a very nice uh, research hypothesis. So I hope this makes sense. And thank you very much for, um, for watching this uh, video.